Yo, this is Ryan Fest hanging out with my man Willie PGH on YouTube. Right around the corner from my mom's crib, I'm going to the store for my mother. On the way around the corner, there used to be a liquor store, right? And a drug, right next to the drug store. And my best friend, E Unique, his little brother was about 16. He worked in the drug store. So uh, I'm walking by and I'm, I look at him and the look on his face, I did not like, right? So I said, why you got that look on your face? What's going on? He was like, oh, my mom is mad at me, man. He was like, oh, um, my, my dad going to get me when I, when I leave work tonight and go home. I'm trying to figure out what to say. I said, why your mother mad at you? He was like, man, I've been skipping school, going to see this girl, and I ain't been to school in two weeks, and they sent a letter home so she know. I cursed him out. He's my best friend's little brother. He respects me as his big brother. I'm reinforcing for him to go to school like his mother and father said. And I told him, if I see you with that look on your face, or I see you during school time, if you ain't in school, I'm going to f*** you up. Don't, I'm going to mess you up. Edit that out. Don't be putting my curses on the internet. <laughs> right? So I told him straight up, if I see you, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a f*** you up. Right? <laughs> so, so the lady, the old lady, whose her son owns the liquor store, she comes running out the liquor store. Who's that outside my store with that foul mouth? I don't even look at her. I just keep talking to my dude. She's like, you. I'm talking to you. I'm like, lady, do me a favor. Mind your f***ing business. <laughs> I'm dealing with him. You understand what I'm saying? I'm dealing with him, and it's none of your business. Just go back in your store and mind your business. She starts, yeah, 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 yeah. So, once again, I say, yo, mind your business. Go back in your store, mind your business. This ain't got nothing to do with you. I hear somebody from across the street say, hey, shut up. I turn around and look, and it's a police car that has stopped the guy that had ran a red light and was running his plates. He's looking across the street. He don't know what my conversation with her is. I'm like, you talking to me? You talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Shut up. I said, you shut the f up. <laughs> what are you talking to? You don't even know what you're talking about. So he comes across the street. I got this big old radio, like Radio Raheem. You know what I mean? And he comes over there like, like, I told you to shut up. I'm like, I don't care what you say. You ain't my father. Since when do the police go around telling people to shut up? What, what law is that if I don't shut up? He was like, Put your hand behind your back. I was like, why? Because you're under arrest. For what? <laughs> disturbing the peace. I was minding my own business. She came out of the store disturbing the peace. Not me. Right? He turned his back to me and asked her what happened. He was outside my store using profanity, and I came out, and I told him to stop. First of all, it's no law against profanity. <laughs> you can tell a cop whatever you want to if you ain't scared of him whipping your <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You can even flip a cop the bird. Constitutionally protected freedom of speech. It's been proven, right? A cop cannot arrest you for flipping him the bird even, right? That was so, recent though. Yeah, but still, it's recent because people like we, me we ain't having this well, let me say this. They can't arrest you. But it's going to get thrown out. It's going to get thrown out. Exactly. Yeah. They can arrest it's gonna you. It's going to waste money. Want. Right. Okay. And obviously. Yeah. Right. So, oh so he was like, I said, put your hand behind your back. Are you going to resist? I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to resist. But you, you're going to be in a whole bunch of shit when you get to the precinct. I laughed at him. I gave my boy the radio. I said, you'll take this radio up to my, to my mom's crib. I'll be back. It's a Friday. In New York, what the cops like to do to young black men, they like to arrest on you Friday. on Friday, Monday. keep no. you to Monday, yeah. and, and they don't even keep you in one place. Every four hours, they move you to another place until, until Monday, and they give you bologna sandwiches, that's green bologna, with stale bread, no mayo, no nothing, <laughs> just a piece of bologna, and you get that every time, every meal, it's the same thing. Right? So they took me in the precinct in bed stuy which is, I don't even know why. They didn't even take me to the precinct in my community, which is right down the block. Right. He's not even a cop from around my way. 
he drives me all the way to the next community to the police station and when he walked in the police station with me like this yo all the cops stood up all the white cops stood up they was like yeah yeah what we got him for i was like what the hell is that about so we go to the desk i asked i said who's the sergeant here it was like i said tell him i need to talk to him sergeant came over i said look it's my elder Sonny Carson's phone number. Call him right now. He was like, huh? I said, call Sonny Carson right now. Dude looked at him. He said, what do you got him for? He was like, uh, he was uh, arguing with this lady. Dude was like, come here, let me talk to you. <laughs> Two minutes later, you can leave. I said, nah. First of all, somebody's driving me back with him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Second of all, I want an apology. It was like, I'm sorry. And the the, the, the precinct, the dude, the captain drove me home. Because they didn't want it with Sonny Carson. Because they know one phone call, 50,000 black men in front of the precinct. Mm -hmm. Do y'all know who Sonny Carson is? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Do you want to tell yeah, him? Uh, Sonny Carson, he was the father of the of, uh, Professor X, who was in my group, the X Clan. But Sonny Carson, he was, a, he was one of the most feared black men in America. He mentored Al Sharpton, and he ran Brooklyn. Basically, anybody see the movie Hoodlum? Yep. That's a Bumpy Johnson? Yep. Well, Sonny Carson was the Brooklyn Bumpy Johnson. He ran John Gotti and them out of bed style. Same way that Bumpy Johnson ran um, Lucky Luciano and them out of Harlem. But he also was like a very powerful, I don't even know if I want to call him a civil rights leader. Because he, even though he he worked for black people like a civil rights leader does, he had a whole different style of doing it. And like at one point, like he heard that in in Browns, Brownsville, this high school, 50% of the black students failed that year. He went into school and he fired all the teachers. And he don't work for the Board of Education. Oh yeah, um, you know what I'm saying. He walked in this. He called a meeting with the principal and all the students, and basically, and all the uh, the teachers, and basically told them that they was fired. And they was like, "You can't fire us. We don't work for you." He said, "Come to work Monday." <coughs> and they didn't come to work Monday because it was Sonny Carson. But he also wrote an autobiography that was made into a movie called "The Education of Sonny Carson." So if you ever get a chance to Google that or read the book. Yes, sir. I'm gonna get off track, but you said, uh, you mentioned that in New York they like to arrest, arrest you on a Friday, Friday and, and they keep Monday. you to Monday. What's their logic behind that? Like, you can't go to it. You gotta go to a job. You gotta go to a weekend. Yeah. They make money off you. Oh, okay. They making money off you. Where every time one young person gets arrested, how many people make money? Let's count them. Okay. The the person that makes the gas. The person that that as the gas station gets paid because they need more gas for them going back and forth, right? Then you got the judge, right? You got the COs, the POs. Who else is in the system? The lawyers, the police make money. You see what I'm saying? The cap, every, it's a big system. One arrest keeps at, at least six or seven people working.